In this presentation, we will discuss types of documents and records that will be used within the auditing of revenue process. So we're thinking about the auditing of revenue, the types of documents and records that will be involved. We're going to be listing out the types of documents and records, which can seem like a boring process, but it's a very important process for a couple different reasons. One, these are the actual documents that we're going to go through. We're going to have to ask the client for. So we're going to have to go to the client. We're going to have to dig through these types of items when considering the auditing of revenue. We need to know what they are. We need to go and get them. The second thing that's really important here is because most accounting, many people that go through the accounting process, learn the debits and credits much better or more detailed than they, use, than they learn the related documentations to it. And therefore, they don't oftentimes when we go through the accounting process and we learn accounting, we may actually have the financial transactions in terms of debits and credits down a lot more than the documentation that is related to it. Auditing is a great practice that gets us in tuned with what are the documentations related to the financial transactions that are involved. We need that, of course, for the auditing process, but we also need it if we're just doing business or we're working on the GL side of things or just working with accounting software because all these things are going to basically use this type of documentation in order to trigger the financial transaction, the debit and credits that we have learned. So we have to understand the documentation so that we can understand how to apply the debits and credits into an accounting system, into uh, the accounting software. And that's something that many students pick up in the auditing type of process. So type of documents and uh, records. We've got the credit approval form. Credit approval form for credit sales. So if we have a credit sale, obviously a sale on credit, we haven't gotten cash up front. The entity must have a formal process to determine if the customers are credit worthy. This is obviously oftentimes going to be some type of thing that we want to check into depending on the type of industry we are in the sales process that they may have might have a high degree of basically non-payment in it and if there's a credit approval process we want to make sure that the credit approval process is in place so that the, the, there's more likelihood than of course if you have the credit approval that the payment will be received when you make sales on account customer sales order shows the details of the type and quantity of products or services ordered by the customer. So that's going to be the customer sales auditor. Again, shows the details of the type and quantity of products or services ordered by the customer. Then we have the open order report. This is going to be important for the auditor. A report for all customer orders where processing has not been completed. So if we have some kind of system where there's going to be items where the processing has not yet been done, we need to know what the open order report is because if the work has not yet been done, typically we shouldn't be recording the revenue until the point in time that the work has been done. So we need to know what the system is, when the revenue is going to be uh, recognized, when the work is done so that we can test that system. We have the shipping document, uh, typically serves as a bill of lading. It has information on the type of product shipped, the quantity shipped, and other uh, relevant information. So we want to basically be able to check those shipping documents because the shipping documents, if we're talking about goods that are being shipped out, are often the point that we are going to recognize basically the revenue. In other words, the revenue for goods that are being sold typically happens when uh, the, the goods are delivered in some format. The goods are delivered. How do we test when the goods are delivered? Well, if the goods are shipped from a warehouse or something like that, we would need to be able to look at the shipping document and that's going to be one way that we know the, the quantity of goods as well as when the shipping uh, actually took place and therefore be able to tie that out and consider when revenue was recognized. Then we have the sales invoice used to bill the customer uh, contains information on the type of product or service, the quantity, the price and the terms of the trade. So obviously the sales invoice is our invoice. So we usually call it an invoice from our side to the customer. It's going to be the bill, right? We're sending out the invoice to the customer. They are receiving the bill. Therefore, this is going to be usually the point in time with a lot of accounting.